Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, tomorrow's MMA card from a DraftKings or DFS perspective. I'm also going to be following it up with uh, a video of the betting breakdown, which, as you know by now, is completely different. Um, and we'll get into more of that when we do the betting breakdown. Uh, sorry for the late video, but uh, still only Friday, and I was able to at least absorb a little more information before this video, which is uh, always good. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the fact that we have two five-round fights. Um, the, the main event, Volkanovsky versus Makachev and Emmett versus Rodriguez. And this happens, you know, every five, six, seven cards or something like that. And, you know, we have to remember that these five-round fights, you know, are, are typically mispriced. Um, they, they, they don't have dynamic pricing on DraftKings. And they basically price these five round fights the same way as they price the three round fights. They just presume, I don't know what they presume, but they just, you know, they don't make an adjustment for the fact that five rounds is just a lot more <laughs> minutes to work with to accumulate fantasy points. Um, so uh, all else being equal, right, and that's an important qualifier, the five round fights are always better um, from, a, from a points perspective. From a projection perspective. Now, again, that's not the end of the story with respect to DraftKings, with respect to DFS, with respect to GPPs, because in tournaments you want to, you know, you don't want to pick the highest owned fighters. Um, and because the five round fights rate to be really, really strong, they're going to be high owned. So it's always a big decision um, whether to fade these five round fights or to respect them. Um, and, and usually the answer, as with most things in DFS, uh, comes down to what the rest of the slate looks like. I mean, you're going to need those five round fights, um, given the fact they're going to be really high owned. Um, are you going to be able to maybe get the same amount of fantasy points, perhaps even more, uh, not using them? Uh, you know, we do have a 13 fight card, so maybe those 11 other fights will get you enough fantasy points where you could fade the high ownership from those two fights. So. It's something that we always have to consider. And today you have two of them, which makes it even harder. You have to you know, double consider them. Um, so I, I actually want to show you the ownerships that I have, at least for now. And I don't think these are going to change too much. Um, just to kind of show you what, uh, um, what, what it looks like. So these are my sheets, which I don't show all too often, but in any case, as you see in the main event, you have Makachev rating be 40% owned. You have um, the, the underdog, Volkanovsky, 30% owned. And then in the secondary main event, you have Yaya Rodriguez, 37% owned and Emmett, 32%. So you're getting, you rated these these all these fighters by ownership. You're getting one, two, like, uh, of the top nine values, all four, four of them are from the main event, uh, two main events. And the top two are from the main events as well. Okay. So you're getting quite a bit of ownership, although, I mean, the Volkanovsky side is not as owned as sometimes it could be. Right. Um, and Emmett 32% is still pretty healthy. So um, that's something you have to really consider when you're looking at ownerships and when you look at these five round fights. But let's let's start with those, I guess. So you have Makachev, who is a you know minus three fifty favorite, which means he's going to win about seventy five percent of the time, maybe even a little bit more. In addition to that, he's got everything else that you want in, in a in a DraftKings play. He's got a strong inside the distance prop, meaning he rates to. Makachev inside the distance is about minus 120. So, you know, about 30, you know, 55% of the time he's going to finish uh, Volkanovsky, which is a really, really strong inside the distance prop in and of itself. Not to mention the fact that he's got incredible takedown upside. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world, um, you could argue. So uh, he has that takedown upside that could rack up fantasy points that way as well. Not to mention that he's got five rounds to work with that he can get a whole bunch of takedowns over the course of five rounds and maybe not even need a, a finish to, to, to put up a really good score. Now, 
what he has going against him is that, well, he's 90, 90, uh, 500, which means he's going to need every bit of that. You know, he's going to need at 9,500, you got to have at least 110, probably more than that, probably like 120. And considering that he's going to be 40% owned, I would say 120 is kind of the floor of what you're going to need from him. Um, so, yes, it's a good play, but it's not a complete smash play. So, so at, at 40% ownership, and I guess I guess I repeated the same issue twice, right? One of the reasons he's not a smash play is because he's going to be 40% owned. I think he's okay, but I wouldn't I wouldn't lock him in or anything like that, um, because of his you know listen of the seventy eight percent of the time that he wins, he's in the optimal not seventy eight percent of the time. Okay, um, I would say he's in the optimal. I mean it's hard to say without doing sims and even doing sims is a little bit fishy in MMA, um, but it's less. Is it less than forty percent, which is what his ownership is going to be? I don't know. Um, but it's not so easy just to say, just take Makachev and just jam him in. Right? Let's talk about the Volkanovsky side for a second, though. See, Volkanovsky, by by uh, the way the math works, he's going to win this fight about 22 25% of the time, something like that. But I have to say that given the styles and given everything else, I think that when he wins, I, I, I it's hard to say every time. Because, you know, 100% is just something you never want to say in life. But I don't see any variation where he wins and does not make the optimal at 6,700, right? Because for him to win, he's got to either, first of all, you know, he, it's got to be a striking-based fight, right? Because that's where his edge lies. And so he's going to either get a knockout, right? Which In which case, 6,700, he's like a lock to be in the optimal. Or... He wins a five round, you know, volume based technical decision where, remember, this five round is a big deal. I mean, I find it hard to believe he scores less than 85, maybe. I mean, for him to actually beat Makachev, he's got to put on a lot of freaking strikes here, you know? So I think that the Volkanovsky, I actually think, is the better GPP play than, than Makachev. Uh, because the other thing about this is that Makachev being the highest owned fighter on the slate, you get that extra leverage against him by playing Volkanovsky. So it's a, it's a very risky play because, first of all, it's not like you're getting a big break in ownership, right? And it's not like you're going to win too often. You're going to win 22 20% you know, percent of the time. But when that wins, I mean, you're, you're, you're kind of in business, okay? So I, I do recommend the Volkanovsky side. Uh, better than the than the Makachev side if you're playing just a couple of lines. Um, uh, if you're playing MME, yeah, I mean, you have to get some of both of them. Uh, but I, I definitely think Volkanovski is the is the better GPP play of the two. Um, now let's look at this other one. So Rodriguez versus Emmett. Um, so the inside the distance prop for this one is pretty poor. Um, I would say, especially well, not especially. Let, let's take a look at this. Um, you have Emmett by, well, let's start with uh, Rodriguez. Rodriguez inside the distance is, is plus two, like basically plus 300. Okay. Emmett inside the distance is like plus 350 or so. Right. Um, so neither of them are, look, that, you know, have that great of an inside the distance prop. If you play these guys, you're just kind of hoping that they score enough in these decisions to make the optimal. And uh, I have to say that neither one is, is like a lot to do that. You know, like Rodriguez, he could put a volume, but it, it, it's more of like kicking and staying at range type volume and not just like teeing off on him. So in his decisions, I think Emmett busts like a decent amount of, it's not Emmett, Rodriguez busts a, a decent amount of the time, given the fact that he's 37% owned, uh, in, 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 you know, single entry, three max, I, I would probably not use him. The, the Emmett play makes a little more sense to me because there's one other thing. First of all, the, the price, you know, just makes it just better. I mean, his inside the distance prop is very similar to Rodriguez. And the other thing is that I think Emmett's win condition 
has a little more upside um, because for Emmett to win, he's got to kind of get inside. And when he gets inside, I mean, that puts a little bit more of the KO in play and more volume in play. And the other thing is that Emmett does have wrestling upside. Now, he hasn't used it very frequently, but uh, if he does, I mean, he could look like he was 9,400. You know what I mean? Like if in fact he like gets a takedown like the first round and sees how easy it could be, if that's the way it works, he can continue doing that over four rounds and score 110 points. Okay. Or five rounds. So I think that between the two of these guys, I think Emmett is the better GPP play, right? Same as, same as, uh, you know, the underdog in the, in the main event. So if you're playing three max, 20 max, whatever it is, I would prefer the two underdogs in, in the, um, in the uh in the five round fights as opposed to the favorites all right the next thing i want to do is i want to um uh this is the order i want to go i'm not going to go fight by fight i'm going to talk about like different types of fights so the first type of fight i want to talk about are kind of like the middling fights that have really strong inside the distance props that i think you want to probably take a shot at at you know one of these guys just because of the numbers here and the first one i want to look at is um uh, many field against Jimmy Crute. Um, you look at the inside the distance prop of this, you have um, Crute to win by inside the distance is almost, uh, is like minus 110, which is really strong. I and mean, this, this is what you're looking for for a $9,200 fighter. Um, and he is, we'll get to the price in a second. He's much cheaper than that. And even men field inside the distance, like plus 230. And when you look at the pricing here, you have, you know, Crude at 8,600 at, at minus 110 inside the distance is just super strong. Okay. And Menafield at 7,600 plus two to one or something like that inside the distance is super strong. So, so this is a, a really big key middling fight, uh, mid range fight that in GPPs you really want to prioritize. If you're playing, you know, three lineups, five lineups, whatever it is, I think you want to make sure to get one of these two guys. Uh, and and the other fight that kind of well there are a couple but let's let's look at the other main one um, is Malarkey against um, what you call it Malarkey I want to get the guy's name right where where did he go um, Malarkey against Francisco Prado okay so you look at the two inside the distance props you have Malarkey who is inside the distance is, uh, you know, about, he's not quite minus 110, so it's not quite the same as 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 Crute, but it's still pretty reasonable. And then you look at Prado. Prado inside the distance is plus 350, and, and you wouldn't think that's such a big deal. But the way Prado fights, um, he's going to be really coming after it. And, and I think that if he wins, there's a good, good amount of his – of his win condition is first round knockout. Um, so even if you always only, it's only going to happen about 25% of the time. Um, you know, like I said, if that does happen, I mean, he's optimal almost every time, if not every time. Um, and when I look at his, his ownership, Prado, I only have it 16%. So he's definitely, you know, somebody that you want to, you want to put in your underdog pool. So I think that the Prado Malarkey fight is one that you probably not quite as important to get a piece of as the crude men field fight, but it's definitely, you know, right up there. Right. Um, okay. There were a couple of other um, fights like that. I want to talk about, but, but let's, let me, they, they broke it up in, in the best fight odds um, where I couldn't see it. All right. So I want to talk about this one for a second, just because of the price. So Shane Young versus Blake Builder. You look at the inside the distance props, and what do you have here? You have Builder inside the, the distance is, I mean, it's somewhere. Builder, oh, my God, all these, all these props. Builder inside the distance plus 300. I guess that's not that great. Um, but we'll get back to that in a second. Young inside the distance plus 240. I guess that's not that great either. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a little bit better. I mean, it was plus 200. I think I would be more interested. But, but again, 
it's going to be a decent GPP play, but 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 I guess this fight's not as intriguing as I thought. Where what Builder does have though is he does have some takedown upside. I mean, he's aggressive. He puts pressure on if he can get takedowns. The combination of his kind of mediocre inside the distance prop with the fact that he can score a decent score in a, in a decision makes Builder kind of a, a nice conservative, you know, uh, high high underdog play. Okay. Um, all right. Was there any other fight that I forgot that was going to be a kind of like that fight you had to have? Let, let's take a look at the heavyweight fight for a second. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, at Tafa versus Porter here. Um. I just want to make sure that we're not supposed to just look at this one as well. So inside the distance prop, Tafa inside the distance is, I mean, plus 170. That's not bad given his price. We'll get to that in a second. Plus 170. Porter inside the distance is poor. He's plus 300. But he's got a little bit of takedown upside. When you look at the price, I mean, Top at 8,400 at, what was it, what did I say? Plus one. He's 8,400 and he is plus 160 or 170 so inside the distance. Just compare that though to Jimmy Crute, who is the same price pretty much or pretty close, who is minus 110. So Crute's going to be Definitely a better play um, than Tafa, but Tafa is definitely decent. Okay, and the Porter play on the other side. I mean, yeah, I mean it's okay. He's got some takedown upside, I suppose. Um, but I definitely think Tafa is probably the better play as far as GPP goes. So again, we're, we're kind of prioritizing these kind of mid range fights. I still, I still think that the the Crude Menafield one is the first one, and then the um, and then the uh, Malarkey. Prado fight is the second one, but the third one you could look at is, is Tafa against Porter here. And then the other one I want to look at, just because it's a mid-range fight, then we're going to get back to kind of the favorites, is this uh, Kulabal uh, Bogdarian fight. So the pricing is of the type that you kind of want to play this, right? 8,200, 8K. The problem is that the inside the distance numbers are really poor. Um, or are they? Okay, so you have Kulabau inside the distance plus 400. That's rough. Bogda sharing inside the distance is plus 300. They're both like pretty bad. Um, so in th three max, five max, 20 max, whatever it is, you, you don't want to play them. I just wonder if these guys are going to be really low owned. Um, I see Bogdarian at 20%. And then I also see um, Kulabau at 14. Um, probably not going to do it, but like an MME, again, 150 max, you got to get a little bit of everybody. So you're going to have to get some of that. But I guess in three max, five max, you're not going to make that a priority. All right, so let's take a look at some of these favorites and which ones we, we might fade, which ones we might take underdog shots against, and, and, and we'll try to figure this out because a lot of these guys really look the same, okay? Um, so let, let's get to one guy that does not look exactly the same. Um, the first one I want to talk about is the first fight of the night, and that would be the Tukagal fight. Um, hold on, let me go back to this. Where is it? Where where did Tuka Golf go? Again, they they separated all these. Tuka Golf. Okay. So Tuka Golf is a minus 550. Okay. He is the, the, the biggest favorite on the card. In addition to that, you look at his inside the distance prop, and you have Tuka Golf winning inside the distance is depending on where you go, you know, because around a pickup. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit worse. So he's not exactly the has, doesn't exactly have the greatest inside the distance prop, especially for his price, which is, which is 9,600. Okay. Um, he does have some degree of takedown upside though. 
He had six takedowns in one fight, two takedowns, one takedown. Is it enough to, to get there at 9,600? I mean, almost certainly not. But he is going to be definitely the lowest owned of all of these 9K and up fighters. So, and he's the first fight of the night, which people don't want to just kind of like bust in their first fight. Wouldn't you rather just like pay a, a thousand, 100 less for Makachev and always be live to the end? And Makachev probably like, like you know, 70, you know, 80% to outscore this guy, right? You would think. Um, so I just worry that he's just going to be just a little bit too low owned and, and just he come out there, get a couple of takedowns, get a first round, not first round finish and score 115. And, you know, he puts a number up there, which is, you know, listen, 115 is 115. Doesn't matter what your, what your price is. So uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fade him completely in MMA. Certainly is not, you know, going to be one of the priorities though um, uh, in, 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 you know, 20 max or less. Um, so let's take a look at some of these nine Ks and, and we'll start with, again, the, the least likely to get there. Um, again, we're looking for with these nine K fighters are either a, a, uh, inside the distance prop where he rates to finish that even money or better, or a significant takedown upside. That's what you're looking for for the nine K and up fighters. Um, but actually I want to start with someone who's just, who's a little, um, who's a little cheaper. And that would be Clayton Rodriguez. So Clayton Rodriguez, he's priced just like these $9,100 fighters, okay? And he is a minus 340. Actually, even if you count the big, he's minus 300 pretty much to win. And you look at his inside the distance prop, and inside the distance, it's right. It's like minus 110. I mean, he is has the metrics of a $9,100, $9,200 fighter. And he is priced at um, only was it was eighty nine hundred, even less eighty eight hundred. I mean, this is this is an extremely strong play. Okay, um, he is. I, I think that he is just as likely to 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 finish. And listen, forget what I think. That's what the numbers are stating. As any of these ninety one, ninety two hundred dollar guys. Um, yes, I don't think he's got the takedown upside, but. Um, this is a, this is no joke. I mean, this is a really, really good play. And when we do that, we have to kind of look at the other side to see if Ross is, um, if Ross is, uh, is available here. Um, um, Ross is. Where was his price? Okay. Again, he's plus 300, so you're probably not going to play him unless he's got a really, really strong inside the distance prop, which he doesn't. I mean, he's plus like 700 or something like that, so no thanks. But I think that Rodriguez is extremely strong. Uh, now let's look at some of these others. Uh, I guess in no particular order. Let me go back to the two to make sure I didn't forget anybody from that, um, from that group. I don't know why they broke it up this way. Oh, okay. Um, we talked about Shan Young and Blake Builder already, so we're off of that one. Let's look at, uh, they're all going to look very similar. So let's start with, I guess, uh, uh, Tyson Pedro. So Tyson Pedro, he's only a plus 250 favorite. Like, look at his price. I want to compare this for a second. So Pedro is 8,900. He's less of a favorite than Rodriguez. And yet he's priced higher and his inside the distance prop is no better. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. You have, um, what is it? Probably minus 110. Pedro inside the distance, oh, minus 105. I mean, it's no better. So yes, he's fine, but I still think Rodriguez is a better play. Um, just to look at the other side, who, uh, Bukaskis, his inside the distance prop is just really poor here. I mean, let's look at it. Uh, Bukaskis inside the distance, plus 400. Well, well, hold on to that for a second. Plus 400 for a $7,100 fighter. 
is really not the worst. I, let's compare it to some of these others that we'll get to, okay? Um, let's just take a look at this for a second. So Bukowskis, it's like 7,300. So you have to compare them to other $7,300 fighters. So we'll see if there are other 7,300s that are better than plus four, 400. Uh, maybe that's not that bad. So Pedro is okay. Uh, Bukowskis might be in play. We'll get back to him in a minute. So Jack uh, Della Magdalena. Um, actually, we'll get back to him. Let's do uh, Luke, uh, Loma Luke Bumi first. So she is likewise about 9,100 or so. And her inside the distance prop is much poorer than some of these others. Like her, she is inside the distance is plus, you know, it's plus 350. It's extremely poor. Um, she does have some takedown upside. Um, she did show that in her last fight. But I don't think that that's enough um, to, you know, to, to, to get there. The only thing she has going for her is that she's going to be somewhat low owned. I'm going to have her at under 20%. So if you're going deep into GPPs, I think you can play her, but she's definitely not a priority. She's she's definitely worse than Pedro. We already talked about definitely worse than Rodriguez. Um, and, you know, probably worse than Malarkey at cheaper as well. Um, so, you know, uh, GPPs, yes, but uh, otherwise not, not much. Uh, Elise Reed, as you might imagine, well, she's plus 250 or plus 280. She has a she has no inside the distance prop though. I mean, the only way that you can play her is if you think that just there's going to be no underdogs winning and and she's going to be the one plus three hundred that gets there. Um, now this is the type of play, by the way, that you do have to make in one fifty max. Like these are exactly the types of 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 of, of, of fighters that just you know get an arm bar in the first round in a scramble at seventy one hundred and score one hundred ten points and you don't have them. Um, but in, in three max, five max, 20 max, you, you know, you just can't play. Um, all right, Jack Jenkins. Interesting. He's plus 370, uh, big, big favorite price, like at 9,300. And you look at his inside the distance prop and it's very, very strong. I mean, it's minus 120 or so, which is almost what you need, you know, at, at 9,300. What, what you love is a little bit of takedown upside as well. And, and you're getting it, you know, he, he did wrestle a bunch in his last fight. Um, I've heard though that he could go either way with this. I mean, he's, he also does have good boxing and he only went to wrestling because he thought, you know, just really get there in his last fight. So you do run the risk of, of, of this guy opting for a, you know, a higher striking based, um, approach where at 9,300, you're going to really be relying on solely that inside the distance prop. Um, so I think he's fine. I think, listen, I think he's better than Lakumi. I think he's better than, um, uh, than, than Sukagov. Um, but, um, you know, uh, it's certainly not a lock or anything like that. I definitely, I definitely prefer the Rodriguez over him, for example, you know, and I, I think that Pedro is very similar to him at a much cheaper price. So, uh, just be careful on this one, but certainly in play. Um, and then, the, I guess the last fight that we haven't talked about is is Randy Brown versus Jack Magdalena. And it's just pretty straightforward. I mean, he's plus 270, just like some of these others. And, uh, you know, and he's his inside the distance prop is totally reasonable. And we'll take a look at it. He is um, probably minus 120. He's actually a little better than that. He's at minus 125. Even with big, maybe, maybe minus 120. Um and, you know, he's going to need it because he is a full 90, 90, 9,300. He's 9,200, which is very reasonable for this, for this price. Um, he also has a couple of takedowns maybe in his resume, which is possible. Um, as far as the underdog against him, uh, Randy Brown, I mean, not really. I mean, you look at his inside the distance prop, it's really poor. Uh, plus a plus 1,000 or something like that. And I don't see any evidence that Brown is going to be going for takedowns against him either. So, um, I, you know, you're just hoping that he just gets the win. So going back to to the play that I kind of just kind of put off to the side, the, the Bukaskis play, I think that of all these like sub 7400s, um, oh, we didn't talk about Jenkins' opponent, by the way, real quick, real quick. Shanus again, the only way, reason I would play him is if I thought there was some kind of inside the distance prop worth playing, even if it's plus 400, maybe that's good enough. Uh, Shanus inside the distance, I mean, he's plus 700. I mean, he just can't do it. 
So Bukaskis is that next, I really think he is that next underdog because he's the only guy of below 7,400, really, except for Volkanovsky, that has like some kind of upside, really. Um, with the exception of who's the other guy I mentioned, uh, the even Fredo, 7,500. So in lineups where you're going to need 7,300, I do think Bukaskis is, is kind of an interesting hold your nose type play. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. You know, it, it, what who you play of everybody I mentioned really depends on what types of contests you're in. Like if you're playing in the 555, the single entry or stuff like that, you can really stick to the to the good underdogs, that being Man of Field, Prado. I mean, that's very legitimate. Volkanovsky, Emmett. You know, you don't need to go, you know, too far into, into the woods, you know. Um, even the uh who else did I mention? You can play Porter if you wanted to, but I, I'm starting to think that he's kind of almost a secondary play. Um, but look, if you want to play Builder, that's probably a secondary play. Um, if you then, if you wanted to really dip down to like these others, like Randy Brown and Elise Reed and stuff like that, that's where you're really in like the tertiary, like like 150 max type stuff. And as far as the favorites go, I mean, like we went over this, but I think my favorite plays, like by a decent amount, are Rodriguez. Um, Probably Mal Malarkey and at least someone from that, that meta field crude fight. You know, I think that's where you kind of start. And I do think that, listen, the main events are both really, you know, both worth playing, but I, I would probably err on the side of, of the underdogs there if I had to pick. Now, again, it's probably smart if you're going to play multiple lineups to get one of each. But if you have to, like, listen, you have four guys to choose from those two main events, I think Rodriguez would be the guy I would throw out. I, I get rid of him first. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, stay tuned for a betting breakdown, which we're going to take a completely different look at all this. Um, but until then, uh, good luck on what should be a really, really good card.